Hey guys, it is Tristan with Nerdette's Newsstand, and in my second attempt to record this video, we are going to talk about Cowboy Bebop. Now, as you've probably learned from now that it has already been canceled, one season and Netflix said no, and it actually had a lot of watch hours, but I do want to get into the reason at hand as to why I think this was personally canceled and why I think rightfully so. Maybe at some point Netflix will learn their lesson. When they started doing a lot of these comic book adaptations, we saw really awesome ones. We saw great ones like Lack and Key and, of course, Umbrella Academy. And then they started to fall into the lazy trap. And that is where I think we are seeing this kind of progress to. And I'm hoping this kind of fixes things. I don't know that it will, but there's always hope there, right? So we're going to talk about why I think this was canceled. Of course, there are plenty of other reasons um, that we can include. We can talk about the fact that 60%, there was a 60% drop from week one to week two when it was essentially released. The average viewed episode was only four, but that's actually more than I made it through. I only made it through three. But what I want to actually talk about surprisingly enough, and completely opposite of what mo most people would say, it is because they took the political and social concepts out of the show. And I want to go through an actual tweet thread from Jen Bartel. And if you don't know who Jen Bartel is, you are crazy. She is amazing. She is one of the female, I guess, comic book artist she does a lot of covers but she has done some amazing work that I absolutely love her future state Wonder Woman alone because it was so beautiful will probably make my top books of the year it was absolutely stunning and feminine and everything that you would expect from a Wonder Woman book with her art it made it oh fantastic but we're actually talking about Cowboy Bebop, not Wonder Woman. That's for a totally different video. Anyways, so let's take a look at what Jen Bartel had to say. Now, my biggest problem with this right up front is that she says she wasn't going to say anything public until it was canceled. Now, she could have, to be fair, been waiting to see if it was approved upon on maybe season two. But I don't feel like people should have to be silent and not criticize something because maybe... A lot of people hate it on the right. And I feel like that's more where this is. This was kind of, oh my God, look, they changed her outfit. This girl talks back. This was really, oh my God, they're disrespecting the fans. You know what I'm talking about here. And and I feel like that's probably why she didn't want to say anything. But I could be wrong. To be fair, it could just be because she wanted to wait and give them a chance to do season two. I don't know. But what she says in this is extremely correct to why this failed. And I actually think it couldn't be said better, so we're going to look through what she has to say. She said, I would just like to point out that the main issue was not Ed or Vicious, but rather that it recreated a piece of media that was defined by political statements and removed every single one of them. That's a big deal when you take away the fundamental foundation of a show, paint the name on it, and hope people like it. It is unlikely that it is going to work out. And we see in this, it did not. You cannot take away. This was very, a uh, Cowboy Bebop was always very po political, right? And Unfortunately, when you take that away to try to appeal to a broader audience, it doesn't work. So it says in the original series, we're introduced to a world that despite being set in a future where humans have traveled to the far reaches of the galaxy, they still face all of today's inequities. So much so that it's normal for bounty hunters to compete with one another for a living. Spike had to fake his own death to escape the criminal enterprise he once was a part of, an insidious organization that quietly causes suffering everywhere its reach extends. We only ever catch glimpses of the syndicate, but their subtle 
influences is felt throughout the show. And I feel like the show, even in three episodes, took away the subtle. And that's where I had a big issue. It was, you were you knew who the syndicate was right away and they had a massive presence. It was very weird. It was very different. Jet leaves his police career behind after being betrayed by his partner and discovering that literally every other cop in his department was also corrupt. The original series very intentionally shows that rogue bounty hunters have a higher moral code than the police officers. Faye is woken from Cairo's sleep and swindled not only by a con man, but also by the hospital staff who work with him. She is in massive debt because of an extraordinary charge that got tacked onto her medical bills, revealing that an all too familiar broken system that ruins people's lives. And I, I, as somebody who works in the medical field, the, the way that billing is done is abhorrent. And I am not being hyperbolic about it. If you are saying that a Tegaderm is $100 when you can buy it at Rite Aid for three, you have a very serious problem within that industry. And they also charge people on Medicare, on Medicaid, way more because they know the government pays for it. It is an abhorrent system that needs fixed. That's that, that's just the truth. Um, Gren is a war veteran who was unjustly imprisoned and medically experimented upon because that because his, at the time, comrade Vicious set him up. When Gren finally confronts Vicious for his betrayal, he doesn't even remember him. To the syndicate, every person is expendable. Ed and Ian are the smartest characters in the Bebop, subverting expectations that are based only upon appearance. And that was kind of what I love, right? The idea that y- you you judge, and that is subverting that expectation, and acting as the glue that really binds Spike, Jet, and Faye together throughout the majority of the original show. Ed's departure is the herald to Spike's demise. There's a blink and you'll miss it moment in the movie with Punch, one of the hosts from the Bounder Hunter leaderboards, um, Big Show a.k.a. Alfredo, right? Admitting his mother that he's been uh, let go from a job and he completely drops the fake accent and that he had put, put on for the audience. <laughs> um, the original made it a point to focus on the struggles of poor and working class people within this dystopian future, often spending entire episodes to show how established systems and power structures have harmed not only the main cast, but every single side character as well. Throughout these intimate character vignettes, the original series takes a very clear stance on a wide range of socioeconomical and political issues that, frankly, in 25 years since Bebop's original release, have been further exasperated rather than resolved or improved whatsoever, right? The living action version of Cowboy uh, erases all of these details, even prioritizing the exterior cool factor of each character, riddling them the majority of their from their original motives, effectively hollowing them out and turning them into a shallow, unrelatable version of themselves and quite vapid at that. Jet is no longer a good cop in his squadron. Now there's only one bad guy there, his partner, of course. So just one bad cop making his reasonings for leaving and everything he took pride in feel muddled and removing the original show statement on corruption in police entirely. Faye in the original show was capable and crafty as a femme fatale in massive medical debt who under an exterior layer of sass was a compassionate and loyal friend who was desperately terrified of being abandoned. We uh, The live action is written mostly like a capital G girl boss, like a LOL so random, I can do anything girl boss. We call that a Mary Sue. It's very rare, but in the live action, it was there. In the OG, 
The vicious was like Jaws. You only saw the dorsal fin every now and then. That's a perfect, and I mean perfect, explanation of how vicious was. You only saw the dorsal fin every now and then, and that's all we needed. He was terrifying because of all the blanks we had to fill in ourselves. In the live action show, he's belligerent and incompetent and not a worthy nemesis for Spike. He's also like degraded a lot and just, just, he looks, I will say this, he looks exactly like a live action Vicious should. Axe is a different way. The, this version of b is hollow, vapid, sometimes literally a shot for shot remake that removes most of what made the original series so interesting and endearing for fans. I could go on, but the thread is too long. Da, da, da. You get the point. Just watch the anime. <laughs> One more thing. For all the effort the live action show put into surface level diversity and representation, it actually somehow ended up being less diverse than the anime. That is absolutely true. There was no reason for a lot of the changes. And I do think most people will look at this and go, yeah, it's time to just go back to that anime and look at the concepts. Look at the police corruption. Look at the kind of basic talk about capitalism, where it fails, where it does well, where giant corporations hurt the you know blue class, blue collar. And, and, I, and I think it's really a shame, and I've talked about this before, that animation is not taken seriously, um, especially to an older audience, because animation can be done really well. And this is a perfect example of when you do not need a live action because something will be ruined, something will be lost in translation, and something was, and that was at the behest of Netflix, and look at what happened. When you take away all of what the show was and what it meant and who it meant something to, you are left with a shell of your former adaptation, and it's not working, clearly, clearly. I don't know why... They didn't put a lot in. I do think Netflix's unwillingness to offend has reached a great amount of, oh my God, we can't have anything about police. We can't have anything about black. We can't have anything about poor. We can't have anything about capitalism. Their unwillingness to offend is ruining their content. And that's a shame because content should make you think. Content should make you question. Something like this should make you look at the healthcare system and go, wow, that's a big problem. You know, that's a huge problem. What what is being done? It doesn't though. Not not in not in the adaptation. So like I like she said, just go watch the anime. Just let me know what you guys think down below though. If you are bummed, I would be shocked if I had one person bummed. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I'm not going to lie here at all. I don't think anyone's upset about this. I think everybody is just like, yep, not surprised. What is it? One piece is next. That'll be ruined too. All right. Anyways, let me know, of course, what you guys think about this. And I will see you in the next.